blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. seated thank you to be in a church with life is living to be in a church with death is dying sometimes pastors like Moses are not too common pastors like Joshua who can say to the son stand there till I finish my message they are not very common Pastors who believe in miracles is what the church needs today. When you read about Jesus, you are hearing his word when you read the Bible. When a preacher like me or any of us stand up and open the Bible and say, turn to Matthew chapter 4, turn to Luke chapter 4, turn to John 3.16, all we are telling you from the scripture 
is what Jesus would have said if he's standing physically. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? My statement tonight is this. If Jesus were here in physical form, and you say, welcome Jesus, and this is he, what he will say to Dr. Peter Lenneker tonight will be, you look nice. You look good. Words that come out of Jesus' mouth are words of encouragement. He met a woman that was caught in the act of adultery. Jesus wasn't the one that caught him. Ha. Men caught her and brought her to him. And Jesus looked at her. The men had stones in their hand to stone her to death for committing adultery. And Jesus, they said to Jesus, See, this woman, she's rotten. We caught her in the very act of adultery. And Jesus said, Lovely. Thank you, you caught her. You haven't come to tell me you prayed for her. You have not come to tell me you asked her to confess her sin. You are catchers of sinners. Who is the actor in the act? Thank God I, you didn't hear that English. You who caught her, who was the actor? Because you caught her in the act. Which among you men was the one having adultery with her? Because if you caught her in the very act, somebody was acting. Who among you? And they said, uh, we are not the one. Put it. <laughs> it is easy to show sinners how they sin. God is not looking for sin pointers. God is looking for sin forgivers. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. I show you your sin, but Jesus take it from you. Who will you follow if you were a man? A sin shower or a sin taker? I didn't hear you. Talk back to me. Whom will you follow? The man who tells you how bad you are, the man who says you are bad but I will repay you, whom will you follow? The man who, who can repair your life. Yes or no? That's it. That's the person you should follow. If Jesus were standing here tonight, he would say, Dr. Peter, you've never been as handsome as this. You're so lovely. Thank God for your wife. She must have been the one who chose this tie for you. Jesus would talk like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus shows the way out of darkness. He doesn't put people in darkness. He sees the worst sinner. He helps him out of sin. He sees the man very sick. When I was preaching, I began to look at the act of Jesus, the action of Christ. For example, they came to call him and said, The man whom thou love is dead. He's sick. First he's sick. Come and heal him, which is easy. Come and heal him is easier than come and raise him. Do you believe that? <laughs> They went, he, he said, tell them I'm coming. Day one, he didn't come. Day two, he didn't come. Day three, he didn't come. Day four, he rose up from where he was preaching. He said, let's go wake him up. He's sleeping. No pastor talk like that today. Pastor sent condolence card. Jesus wake the dead up. Can I hear you say Hallelujah. The, the, the disciples say, if he's sleeping, there's no need to trouble him. Let him rest in peace. Jesus said, in your language, it means he's dead. Let's go and wake him up. Let's raise him up. And they say, don't forget that people hate you. They will kill you. If you go there, they have said they are going to kill you this week. I don't want to be part of our assassination uh, uh, team. He said, let's go. There are 12 hours in the day. Light, 24 hours. Light, 12. Darkness, 12. Let's go and wake him up. And they followed him gradually. When he got to the gate of the city, here came Mary in tears. Oh, Lord, you disappointed me. You didn't go. My brother is dead. Now he's buried. Oh, God, look at what you did. I gave you food. I gave you water. Now I have need. You didn't come. If thou were here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus said, no problem. Did he really die? He said, stinketh. It's all right. Let's go. Go show me where you where he's buried. And they followed. Very close to the house. Here came Martha, the woman who always spent all her hours in the kitchen. 
She came. Lord, if thou were here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, that's not the problem. I'm resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, even though he were dead, yet shall he live. The question is, do you believe? And I'm asking everybody tonight, do you believe? I'm not asking you whether you came to church. Do you believe? Yes. He said, I know he will rise on the resurrection morning when the dead in Christ shall rise. Jesus said, not that time, but today. I'm going to raise him up today. And he asked the most astonishing question that he is not being asked in the church today, including me. I don't ask the question. Where do you bury him, you who have the gift of burying the dead? And they said, it's in the sepulchre, very close, let's go and see. They followed him, I said, he said, right, is that where you buried him? Listen to the question. Where did you bury him? Show me where you buried him. Not, not where I should bury him. The question is, where did you bury him? Jesus will give you a question to challenge your faith. To see how you will answer. Where did you bury him? They say, see, it's okay. Take away the stone. That's job number one. They took away the stone. Listen, I preached that message here before. And Jesus, the Bible said, lifted his head up. Take away the stone. They took away the stone. Instead of Jesus looking at the grave, he looked up. He said, Father, thank you. Everybody say that. You heard me already. Say that. Father, thank you. You've heard me already. How can someone be in the grave and you are thanking the Father for hearing you already? That's what he wants to say. He said, not because of me, but because of these hundreds of people that are here in Penel Miracle Center tonight. Glorify your name in our midst and show your power. Because when there's no miracle, no Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And he said, thank you. Then he looked down. He looked up first before he looked down. He saw his father first before he looked at the grave. Then he now looked at the grave and said, Aha, uh -huh, the stone is away. Lazarus, come forth! All the elders in the church, all the deacons, all the associates, hey, come, come where? Mary had already said he's stinking. And Jesus said, That's why I'm going there. He's rotting. I'm socializing in a rotting situation. Just in case you are rotting tonight and you are in a rotting situation. Here comes Jesus to tell you, come out. Amen. I say, come out. Amen. No matter how rotten your situation is in business, in marriage, in home, in education, in situation, there's a razor of the rotten situation. He said, he's here tonight. Amen. Come forth. And the Bible says, and he that was dead. Say that, everybody. And he English of the Bible is confusing. How can he die and was dead? If he was dead, he was dead. He's not dead. He that was dead came forth, bound hand and feet. In history, in medicine, in education, in science, you can't come out bound hand and feet. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. Johnson, are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are dead and you are tied, your hands tied, your feet tied, you can't come forth unless somebody brings you forth. A power beyond man's understanding, a power beyond, a power beneath the grave. When Jesus said, come forth, there was a force, and the comfort is comfort. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Comfort, comfort. That force just said, Lazarus, we've lost you. Go! Come forth! Go, Lazarus! Your master is calling you. That man has come here again to disturb us. We have held you for four days. Think of it decomposed, the Bible said. Smelling, the Bible said. Rotting, the Bible said. How can he decompose? How can he be rotting? How can he be smelling and come forth? The man whom you cannot ask questions is the one who told him to come out. Amen. You say, my hair have left my head. That's prosperity. <laughs> you say, I don't know what to do. That's why you are here. Amen. The man who knows what to do is present tonight. Amen. Respect.
respond, please say hallelujah. hallelujah. You say, I'm very down. The man lower than where you are in the bottom. No pit is too deep that God's hand is not beneath. And no height is so high to catch up with the most high. Somebody say amen. amen. They threw him up bar. And suddenly, I, I can't explain it, but imagine it. I'm only asking you to imagine it. Bound, tied, leg, hands, face, bandage, stood up. And Jesus said, it's okay. You're out already. You who tie him, lose him and let him go. It's not enough to get out of the grave. You better be loose and go. Amen. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Amen. If you come out of the grave, that's step one. Be loose to go. If you are born again, that's nice. Be loose to go. If you are healed, nice. But be loose to go. Don't come out of the grave and behave gravely. Thank you. Don't act like a man that is still in the grave. Tell all who tied your faith down to lose you and let you go. They lose him. And guess what happened? Jesus preached in Bethany for three years with only three converts. But when Lazarus got up, 42,000 people gave their life to Jesus. One miracle would discomfort all your enemies. If you preach science and wonder, you don't steal converts, you make converts. Nobody will fight you and say, you took my, all my members and I in your church. No, they told me that in 1974, a preacher in my city. He said, now that you are stealing all my members, I'm going to blackmail you as if you blackmail me, God will whitemail me. Yeah. You do your part. He said, I will kill you. I said, you can't do that. That's only where you have no authority. He came to my house. He said, Benson, I've told you, now that all my choir are now your choir, my members are now your members, and I warn you, you refuse, I'm going to kill you. I said, brother, I will attend your funeral service. I said, brother, I will attend your funeral service. I told him, it's very dangerous to tell me you will kill me, because I have a consuming fire, God. I don't say, you don't tell me I will kill you, then I look for people to go and beg you. I can't do that. You tell me you kill me, I tell you I bury you. And if need be, heaven will intervene. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. I told him, and you guess what? I was going to travel the day I heard he died. I postponed my trip to attend his funeral. Don't tell anybody who wants to kill you, I'm, I'm sorry. If you say he want to kill you, tell him you attend his funeral. And I went to the wake keeping. Everybody said, I said, I said, I said, oh yes, I'm here. I did all I can do for 20 years to go close to him. He put a bridge. He put a wall there. I built a bridge he destroyed. I built a bridge he destroyed. Every month he will put my name in paper. CIA. First man will come to me, are you really CIA? I say, yes. Christian International Ambassador. <laughs> I am. They say, how much do they pay you? I say, free offering. <laughs> I get free offering. No, we want to know the truth. Are you really a CIA? I say, I am. Because if I tell you I'm not, you are not going to believe. So I am. I am. You are a CIA? Sure. How can he pay me? America doesn't have the money I need. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, not from abroad. <laughs> Somebody hear what I'm saying when I say hallelujah. I prefer to be a bigger, not a beggar. I prefer you think I'm rich than to show you I'm poor. If you see me dressed like this, you know I have no cash in my pocket. That's better for me than for me to dress like rag. So you can see, very poor. God forbid. Jesus took all my burdens away. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Lose him and let him go. And they lose him and he went. Today, who is God looking for? Losers of the bound, raisers of the dead, healers of the sick, joy makers. Don't say I'm not a pastor. Let somebody sitting near you in the choir be very happy that he's sitting near you every time. The way you behave, 
the smile from your face. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? I used to have friends that have six o'clock every evening. Every day they, they have six o'clock face. I tried to make it quarter to 12. <laughs> because you go to heaven earlier when you are not smiling. It takes 2,800 nerves to be angry. I took only 54 to smile. Why not you take 54? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when you are tense, your whole blood shrink. You are sick suddenly. Because you are not happy. And you live longer when you are happy. When you see a man like this come, I'm alive! He's telling you whom he is. He's not telling you you. I don't know whether it makes sense to you. If you hear him say, I'm alive! He's not telling you are alive. He say, ah. So if you want to be like me, be alive. You say, I don't like him. It, does not, it doesn't do anything to him. It's you who doesn't like him. He likes himself. God made us in his image and his likeness. Somebody said, God likes me. That's Genesis. God made you in his image and likeness. And if God likes you, who the rest of people can knock their head to the wall. Doesn't matter. You say, the reason they don't like me is because I'm low, I'm short. No. For short people, Jesus said, low, I'm with you always. <laughs> Thank you. Clap it very well. Clap your hand. They didn't hear it in Benjamin. All short people. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 28, Lo, I'm with you always. <laughs> Jesus, if you refuse to be tall, I come near you on the floor. <laughs> Turn with me tonight to Exodus. Exodus. Chapter four. Verse ten. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my God, O my Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here, heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who had made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind, have not I the Lord? Now, therefore, go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And, and also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what ye shall say. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand. Wherewith thou shalt do signs. Say with me, take rod. Take rod. Say it. Rod. In thy hand. In thy hand. Use, it Use it for signs. Fine. Carry your Bible. Take the rod. Take the rod. Say it everybody. Take In your hand. In your hand. And, begin and begin to do signs. Do Say it loud. Take, take the rod. rod. In your hand. In your hand. And, begin and begin to do signs. Do signs. 
Was Moses in the Bible school? No. In chapter 3, verse 1, you are told that he was just watching over a sheep. His, so his father in law ship, Jethro. That's where God called him and said, Moses, in chapter 3, from verse 1 to 16, you see how God told him, Moses, you have been carrying this rod for a long time. You don't even know what's inside and you don't know what to do with it. That's how many Christians are carrying Bible. Copeland is coming to London. Hallelujah. And he sings, Majesty, worship his majesty. You begin to cry. When he leaves, the tears are over. Then God brings Dr. Sarulo to London. Sarulo is coming. Praise God. The Lord asked me to win one billion souls. You say, oh, Sarulo, praise God. One billion souls. He leaves. Next month, Billy Graham is coming. Hallelujah. Billy Graham. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. This is a man of integrity, I'm telling you now. 52 years. Four years after I was born, he started preaching. He's still preaching with dignity and respect. He makes what I call half of the stadium give their life to Christ. You close your Bible again until you hear us born is coming. You have never asked yourself, why is it that the Bible is real when other people ask me to open it? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. Then, after two weeks time, you know, is coming. He may ask me offering today. And you know I'm going to do that. <laughs> because I, <coughs> I can never cease to respond to your prayer. When you say he's going to ask me offering, I'm going to ask you because you already prayed. If you have shut your mouth, I wouldn't ask for offering. But because you say he's going to ask, I will ask you. But it's not the offering that keeps me alive. It's the word. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? The word of God has kept me 56 years and has kept me in the ministry 35 years and 9 months. There's power in the word of God. God said there's something in your hand. It's for surprises. It's for surprises. It's to do signs. Say do. The Bible is not just carry it. It do with it. For the sick is a healing. For the bound is a loser. For the weak is strength. For the hungry is food. For those that are chained, there's a losing power inside it. For the dead is resurrection. Somebody say hallelujah. Take the rod in your hand. With it, do signs. And Moses said, truly, let's see what Moses said. Verse 17. Let's read it together. Are you there? And thou shalt take. What did he say you should do? Excuse me. Do what? I said do what? Look at simple mathematician. Mathematics. Thou shalt take this rod in thy hand. It's already there. Take it. If you don't open this Bible, it will be a black book. But if you take it and open it, it becomes science book. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Take it in thy hand. Where will thou do signs? Verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh. Say wonders. wonders. Talk back to me. Say wonders. wonders. Aren't you tired of wondering? I say, are you not tired of wondering? Only when a preacher is coming to town, you hold your Bible. When I finish preaching, you say, the house has said this, the house has said this, the house has said this, Sarulo says this, Osborne says this, Copeland says this, Billy Graham says this. What has God said? Because if all of us say what we want to say, right or wrong, what has God said? Because if God says nothing, you have wasted your time. No matter who preach, whether they preach with fire and brimstone, if you don't believe it, there shall be no signs.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. That's where God first brought the Hambonki to my crusade. 12,000 people jammed the Jomo Kayenta Center. A woman who had been in my crusade at Kamkuji ground, 250,000 people every night. Blind saw, lame, walk, deaf head. I didn't lay hand on anybody. The last day of the crusade, I announced, Colin, I said, tomorrow at the Jomo Kenta Center, I'm going to address all preachers and lay workers and teachers and believers. She told the taxi driver, say, I'm going. The taxi driver said, they are talking of pastors. He said, I'll become one tomorrow. Amen. But the man said, you are blind and you are crippled. He said, that's why I'm going. He will heal me and I become a preacher the next day. Blind and crippled, 55 years old. The next morning, they carry. They said, That door, he said, Put me near there. All my security staff, the police sent by the government of Kenya, followed me up and down. I came to the hall, I preached for three hours, taught pastors. 12,000 ministers from the whole of East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, different places, Dar es Salaam, they all were there. When I said, let's stand up to close in prayer, they all stood. Miracles everywhere, everywhere. When I was going, she asked somebody, say, which door is it going to pass? They say, here. The door that people knew I was going to pass, security said, that's not the door. They said, take here. When I was going, I heard the Holy Spirit say, go that side. So I told them, I told them, I said, let's go this way. They said, people are waiting there. There's one blind cripple. I said, let's pass there. Let's pass there. As she heard the feet of those escorting me, gri, 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 gri. She said, where is he, where is he? She stretched her hand. Touch my suit. Her eyes opened. Her legs straightened. And Kenya National Newspaper carried it. 55 years, blind, deaf, crippled. Today she's a preacher in, in East Africa. How? She believed before she got it. You understand? At the end of the crusade, many would have been angry. He did heal me. I have never healed anybody since I was born. But she said, I will see tomorrow. I will walk tomorrow. 
And that day, even though I was going away, the healer was in town. And he has healer in the town today. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Take the rod in your hand. Tomorrow do signs. Today do wonders. Don't carry the Bible painfully. Carry it prayerfully. Don't carry it as a heavy load. Carry it as a burden discharging. Whenever you open your Bible, open it with joy. Open it with happiness. See that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thy hand. But I will harden his heart, and he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord is of God of Israel. Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Let my people go. Take the rod in your hand. Verse 17. Do miracles. Let's go to chapter 7. Turn your Bible to Exodus chapter 7. Quickly, let's now rush and see. Chapter 7. Exodus 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants, and all the water that were in the river turned to blood. Say rod. rod. Somebody say rod. rod. When you begin to use your Bible for signs and wonders, the wicked kings of this earth will know you are serving a living God. The reason the church is being threatened by government night and day is that the church is no more showing signs and wonders. When the church hears of any news of accusation or persecution, she hides for prayers. She goes for all night to make noise. They go for all night prayer. They, they get there. Give me a chair. Give me a simple chair. There. Give me a smaller chair. Give me one. This is all night. It's now 11 o'clock. Praise the Lord. Come on. Thank you, Brother Colin. Thank you very much. We are here. We are gathered together in this place. They said they are going to kill us. We are gathered, Lord, in your presence. We call your name. What did they say? Did they say they are going to kill us? <laughs> what have we done? What have we done? Oh, Lord, my God. <laughs> When I'm in my wonders, I consider all the trouble that I see. Then I see my soul, my Savior God, to trouble more. How weak thou art, how weak and great thou art. From nine o'clock in the evening to six o'clock in the morning. Moses will see such a situation. I say, Pharaoh! Everybody say, Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Let my people go. He doesn't go to all night. He doesn't go to all night. There's power in the word of God. I believe in all night, but I don't believe in all noise. Nobody have all night like me on earth. I don't think so. At least four nights a week, I'm on all night. You can't have signs and wonders and preach the type of message I preach without having all night. But not noise night. It's prayer night. Are you hearing me? I said, did you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Paul and Silas locked up in cell. Paul and Silas, they prayed, they sang. And who came down? Holy Ghost came down. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what it is. You suppose you get to the bank, which we are going to get to just now. 
Look at the Red Sea and, two, and three million Pharaoh army behind you. And Moses said, Peter, we are going to have one night this evening till tomorrow. What do you think Pharaoh and his troops would have done? All night. They got to the Red Sea. It's there. I'm going to read it just now. God said, Moses. He said, yes, Lord. Say, what, what is that in your hand? Ask me, everybody. Talk back to me. Rod. Say rod. rod. Say rod. rod. And God said, Pharaoh is in your back. And the Red Sea is in your front. Go forward. And Moses said, did you know what you are saying, Lord? The Red Sea is more red today than yesterday. <laughs> it's red than now. It's blood. And God said, that's why you should go forward. If the situation is too tough, don't go back. Go forward. You die quicker when you go back. Die later when you go forward. He said, go forward. He said, God, you didn't see what you are talking the Red Sea. God said, what do you have in your hand, complainer? He said, Rod, he said, stretch it forth. And every time I, I have prayed the Red Sea for over 30 years before I knew that it was not when Moses said, see, then from the beginning, the Red Sea is 8 miles by 16 miles. I hope you are aware of that. It didn't spread. Wow. Here come Moses. No. Sha. One foot. Not 10 feet, not one mile. And God said, forward. Everywhere that is sole of your feet shall tread upon, become your own. That was how the Red Sea began to part and form block on this side and form wall on this side. Not immediately as they step forward. What did God say? What did God say? What did God say? Forward. What is happening to the river? Party. What is happening to the people? Forward. I wish you know what you have in your hand. You would have argued less, blackmail less, and preach more. Because the time you spend in preaching people, if you use it to preach the Bible, you see signs and wonders. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They see parted. And they got to the other side. they didn't know is that in that chapter 14 the Bible said God led them across with high hand there was an invisible hand can I show you chapter 14 verse 8 and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt and he pursued after the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out with an high hand say high hand, high hand. Now, they have not reached the Red Sea, when the Bible said they went out. Even though, th this is, Paul said, behold, I show you mystery. Even though they have not reached the Red Sea, the Bible said God let them out. They were already out. Pharaoh was seeing the people he's pursuing. But as far as God is concerned, they are already at the other side. God can blind your enemy. So you can get to where he sent you. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let, let's, let me say this to you. And it's my prayer. May Pharaoh never pursue you when there's no Red Sea. May he chase you as far as he can do. But God let there be Red Sea first. Because that's the last time he will pursue you. from Pharaoh just said, God, I'm willing for all the enemies to pursue me, but Lord, let there be Red Sea first. Don't let anything happen to me until there's Red Sea. 
when we get to the Red Sea, we will know who is on the Lord's side. The devil can never pursue you next day if there's Red Sea in your front. It's only once. Everybody say once. once. Pursue them. God has already led them out. Before God said, what is in your hand? They already, the Bible said, they already went out. O-U-T, what? Out. Say out. out. As far as God is concerned, the battle was over before the pursuit started. Who took them out? God. With what? Hand. High hand. Wherefore, take that rod in thy hand and do signs and wonders. If you mention my name in Benin Judiciary today, you take my case to any court. It's on record. This judge said, not me, I don't want to die. <laughs> they transfer it to the other one. He said, I don't want to die. You move it to the other court, I don't want to die. Why? Touch not my anointed. You have to prove yourself that you are not a wimp. You are a winner and not a loser. Somebody say, I'm a winner. I'm, a winner. I'm not a loser. I'm a, loser. I'm a winner. I'm, a I'm not a loser. I'm the head and not the tail. Say hallelujah. Today. Today. Recently I came back from abroad. They said there's one Muslim that had just been brought to custom and immigration. He doesn't want to see Christians at all. If you bring anything to Nigeria, he confiscates it. He does this one. He does this. I said, I'd like to see him. I got down from the plane. All the police that came to welcome me and other friends. Welcome, Your Grace. Welcome. I said, Thank you. I said, Where's the man? They said, I said, Ah, excuse me. How are you? What's your name? He said, I'm uh, Haji. I said, Oh, I'm glad to see you. Tell your boys to bring my boxes out when they finish. They are 17. Bring them out for me. He said, No problem, sir. One, two, three, five of you. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people the message continues after this video about anointed you You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. the man they said he kills he destroys make use of them they are instruments in your hands <laughs> supposing i say pastor peter do you know him can you help me i, I just came from my i have 17 pieces 
I got there from England and there are TV equipment and they are very expensive. They say he will seize it. Can we beg him for me? My brother said, um, how much will you pay? But when I said, tell your boys, I went outside, let them bring it. Uh, he said, thank you, sir. Say thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The day the devil will know you are not afraid, he will no more pursue you. What is that in thy hand? Say rod. rod. Say rod. rod. If he becomes snake, they didn't fear, let it become blood. If he become blood, they didn't fear. Look at chapter 9. Hallelujah. Is anybody hearing me tonight? Use what is in your hand that the world may fear you. We are becoming too cowardly. We were in, we were in Holland, May this year. Somebody said, I was like, what you said? I don't like it. I'm going to tell uh, Benihin. I said, I will phone him by myself. And he knew me when he was 14 years old. There's no need for you to report me to him. Tell him. I'll call him by myself. I got to the hotel. I called him. I said, people are trying to imitate you in Holland. I've just told them that folly is not a gift. But if God give it to you, use it. He said, Papa, I know you. Next week, I went to preach for him. The people who reported me to him, told them, he said, I know him. He said, I doesn't lie. If you want to call anybody's name, you don't need to <laughs> tell him. And I do. The good in you, I say. But if you want to imitate them, I tell you no. No. You may try to shout like Shambak. You can never be Shambak. You may try to shout like Serulo. You may never be Serulo. Be yourself before you are anybody else. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? And ask God, what is your gift? Chapter 9. Do you have your Bible there? Verse 23. Let's start from verse 22. And the Lord said unto Moses, Shut forth thy hand toward heaven, that there may be in all the land of Egypt, upon man, upon beast, and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses shut forth his rod. Say rod. rod. Say rod. rod. Stand to your feet and say rod. Get to your feet quickly. Rod. Say rod. rod. Say rod. rod. Say rod. rod. God says, stretch forth your rod. And the Bible says in verse 23, look at it, stand and read it. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven. And the Lord sent thunder and hail. And the fire ran along upon the ground. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it began a nation. Can I hear you say amen? amen. If you begin to do what God is telling you tonight, demons, you think demons can withstand fire? I'm asking you. You think little witches and wizards can withstand fire and hail? The reason they threaten you every time is because you are behaving like a wimp. When they know that you are not afraid, they fear God. They fear you. God says, shut your hand again. Look at the progress Moses is making. And to the glory of God, we are here as a church. We are here as a church. Not the church to beg the devil. No. Not the church to beg sickness. No. Command it to come out. And in the name of Jesus, it shall come out. Chapter 14, we read that before. Chapter 14, verse 16. Chapter 14, verse 16. God said in verse 15, Wherefore cry thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on, dry ground through the midst of the sea. If there's any sea that try to stop your progress, divide it. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Divide it. 
Don't let any Red Sea stop your plan in life. No matter how ready they are, put the rod before it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Paul the apostle went to pray for somebody. He, he prayed, be healed, no, be healed, no, be healed, no. If I... me hear God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. By the time he said the Lord God rebuke you. If it's tough, combine the name. Use the name of the Lord and use the name of God Almighty. Or hold the rod in your hand. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? And I want to say this with a stone in your hand. Say that. And the word in your mouth. And the faith in your heart. Goliath will go down. Goliath will go down. Goliath will go down. With a stone in your hand. With a word in your mouth. With faith in your heart. Every giant will fall. Don't hold the Bible without doing something with it. You may ask for the greatest faith healer on earth to heal you. They can heal you in the church and you'll be dying in the house. Learn how to carry the rod in your hand. When Red Sea comes, say, part. When poverty comes, just say, you are the Lord that he let me. Poverty, I have God that provides all my needs. Sickness, I have God that heal me. Test, he quenched my test. Fear is my boldness. Sorrow, the Lord is my joy. Somebody say, Hallelujah. hallelujah. That leg is your own. God gave you three, two legs. You just added a third one. Any day you are tired, drop the stick and you walk with your two feet. That's all. There's faith in your heart. Don't wait for anybody to come and lay hand on you. No. Be healed from today. I said be healed from today. Drop your walking. Drop it and begin to use your feet. God gave you leg. Drop it, my dear sister. Put it down. Come towards me. Come here. Come here. Give her your glass and come here without that error. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Stand straight. Remain there. Remain there. It is not bad for you to have what you call this in England. What do you call this? Clutch. This is the third leg. If God needed us to have three, he would have given us four. Two at the back and two in the front. He knew that two can carry you. That's why I gave you two. This is assistant until you hear what you are hearing tonight. Now that you have heard what you are hearing tonight, the Lord God has healed you. As far as God is concerned, this is no more part of your life. Amen. Did you hear what I'm saying? Now walk back without it in the name of Jesus. You say I'm limping. Limp and walk. Go. In the name of Jesus. It's your leg. From this night, you'll be healed completely. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. God said to Moses, stretch for the road to the sea. It shall part. He parted. To the heaven, hail and thunder, it came down. To the river, blood. Why do we have the Bible for science and wonder? Not for you to come every Sunday to service. And my head, she pray. <laughs> I'm healed. Monday, my chest, be healed. I'm healed. How many of you have the Lord healed? I'm here. Monday. Tuesday, how many? What is God? It, my back. Then Wednesday, my front. Thursday, my top. The other day, my bottom. It's time for you to use your Bible to say, by his stripes, I am healed. Amen. Divine health is better than divine healing. I like healing, but I want people to come to church jumping and singing. I'm alive. I'm alive. And I'm here tonight to pray for you once and for all. So that when sickness comes next time, you say, no, this body belongs to Jesus. Yes. When poverty comes, say, no, he was poor that I may become rich. When fear comes, say, I have faith. My faith takes over fear. And the Lord is there to heal me. Somebody say, hallelujah. hallelujah. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. I'm what God says I am. Oh, no. I 
and what God says I am. Now use your voice and what God says I am. I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. Lift up your two hands up. Lift up your two hands. Listen tonight. God finds no fault in you. God is training an army that devil will fear. He will not fear you when you are in the wheelchair. He will not fear you when you are in the hospital bed. He will not fear you when you are in the garbage heap eating with swine. And God will get no glory for you to be in the gutter. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Can I hear you say hallelujah? hallelujah. I stretch my hand to your hands. Wherever you are in this sanctuary tonight, may the same hand that lifted Jesus from the grave, brought him to life to die no more, be upon you this night. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, Every trace of sin be forgiven. And every disease be healed. Tonight, I put the sword of God by faith to your hands. And after this night, you will know that you know that you know. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. With this, your hands, signs and wonders shall be done. The name of the Lord shall be glorified. You are the head and not the tail. You are the loser of the bound and not the bound. You are the healer of the sick and not the sick. You are a blessing and not a curse. You are rich and not poor. I pronounce the word of God upon you. I lift up the Bible in my hand to say, may this rod God put in your hand tonight never drop in your hand and God's name be glorified. In Jesus' name, every child of God say loud, Amen. Yeah. The Lord that gave manna to two million people in the wilderness is still alive. The God that supplies all our needs according to His riches in glory is still alive. Say Hallelujah. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. 
click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? 
we couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop Indahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Onitsha. And we went to put posters all over Onitsha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us and right there I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin or Nation for Christ Bible Institute and so that particular year I uh, requested, I wrote and fortunately I was invited to come, so uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, actually I went there in 79, my class started in 1980, and uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools, he started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex, he started Benson Hose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us, and I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from, Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We re entered a storm. There were Filipino pilots, 
And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to believe. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane will move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Idausa. He said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down, five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, the house was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. He called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, Yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believe in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010 and just before I spoke in his world conference they said uh, oh miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors it happens in the third world. Well when I took the microphone I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, 
that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg, what did I talk? Again! 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 Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? 
What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen, this baby died at about nine. And it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why, why, he, why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate. And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What is the girl's name? I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside the world room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Ben in the outside. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father had said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, In water, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in water, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> Yeah.
child with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power, super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, oh, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came. I said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room. I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside. And I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer. And that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about ten grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. 
You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Benson Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, 
Will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938, to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence calls from Britain and the United States while working in Bata Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven the room was filled with the presence of god as benson fell to his knees before the lord wherever you want me to go i will go he prayed through the night renewing his vows to god and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation after his call benson launched into ministry work preaching from village to village the gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary concern with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He walked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa and the rest of the world 
with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as a black African he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his lagos crusade in april 1985 he established the redemption television ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people what leading gospel minister said about our bishop idaosa according to mrs gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching who is reaching millions as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people said daniel oris benin city respect and salute this great man of god even at his death i have been with him on visit to many officials to the governor to the powerful benin tribal kings he moved with god and his people knows it his great miracle cathedral his headquarters sit over ten thousand in 1981 his bible school attract upper class people from different african nations and also come from Mauritius, india uh, pakistan sri lanka indonesia singapore philippines hong kong japan korea the middle east europe and other nations of the world a truly international bible training center of dynamic faith people know that bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. 
He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other fate of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic. Hard working, one of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Dowser. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Benson Dowser was said to be the leader of over 7 million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth he got converted to christianity by a certain pastor Paul, and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members he was very active and converting many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes including my god is not a poor god your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude it is more risky not to take risk i am a possibilitarian a big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck if your faith says yes god cannot say no among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School. Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa, his wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube 
and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed You. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.